Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here, and I want to welcome you back to my beginning C Sharp with Unity tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be diving into the ternary, tern ternary operator, excuse me. But before we do that, let's address our last challenge that we had to do. Well, here's where we last left off. I'm going to delete this. And this was our guessing game. And what we had to do was create three different arrays. And one array contained an array of Boolean values, whether a player was alive or not. Another array contained the names of the players. And yet another array contains the score of those names. So I'm going to do this now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this inside of actually in, let's say, the on, on disable method. So we'll just simply do void on disable like so. And now I'm going to define my three arrays. The first array is going to be my, we'll say my alive array. So we'll just call this bool is alive like so. And I'm just going to do true, false, true. Next, I'm going to have an array of names. Finally, we're going to have an array of scores. And these scores are just going to be random. And we're going to use the random range to do that. You'll notice that instead of storing the range in a variable and then putting that variable in the int array, we're just putting the result of the random, or random range directly into that array. OK, at this point, I want to go through these. And first, we're going to see if a player is alive or not. And we're going to start with the first player. So we'll add our if statement. We're going to do is alive. And we're going to check the first, the first element of that array. Now I can do is allies is true like that. And I can also implicitly check it like so. For the sake of starting out, I just recommend you always put equals to true for now. As you grow more confident with the language, then you can simplify things. But as a beginner, it's just important to spell things out so that you can know exactly what's going on. Okay, so the player is alive, and now we want to print out a string based on their score. If their score is 5 and higher, we want to print, print out something like says, great job, you scored X amount of points, and if it's lower than 5, it's going to be like, terrible job. To do this, we're going to add another if statement. And this time, we're going to check the scores. We're going to be using it greater than or equals than 5. So if this is 5 or higher, we'll print out the following message. Here, if a player scores great 5 or more, we'll print out the name, scored, and then we'll print out the score of points, and then we'll say great job. Otherwise, we'll make print out another statement. Now we're just going to print out a message saying that the person is dead. OK, so we have this done for one person. Now we're going to do this for another person. There's a few things I want you to notice. One, notice that we're using variables that are related to one person, but they're scattered throughout different arrays. You have to wonder, wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow group those variables so that we can access them based off of the person instead of searching these other arrays? Well, as you can know, we're going to answer that in a later video tutorial. And also note, in order to do this again, I have to copy and paste this. Whenever you're copying and pasting code, this should be a warning signal. You're repeating work. And one of the, and one of the really important axioms of software development is don't repeat yourself. Because, because in this case, if I want to make an adjustment for say, say for instance, we want the score to check if it's greater than six or more, now I have to change it in two places instead of changing it in one. 
I'm going to make this just a little bit easier on myself. One thing I don't like also when working in software development is using these magic values here. Instead of hard coding these values, I'm going to assign a variable. And I'm just going to call this person. We're going to assign it to zero. And now I'm going to replace the zero with person. When this is done, I can increase the amount of person. So instead of being zero, it's now going to be one. And now look, when I copy and paste this, I don't have to do anything at all. And this code brings about the question of, wouldn't it be nice if we can take this code here and encapsulate it? so that we can call it from many different places without having to rewrite it every single time. As you can imagine, we do have an answer for that, but we'll be covering it in a later video tutorial. Okay, so we have this all set up. I'm gonna save this. and I'm going to switch back to Unity here. Let's build and run this. And here we have this game tab open. I'm gonna close this. And now let's disable our cube. So Ted scored three points, terrible job. Unfortunately, Frank is dead. Tim scored nine points. Great job. And that is working with this if statements. In this video tutorial, as I mentioned, we'll be working with the ternary, ternary operator. And excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things I see. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I, I'm probably mangling it. But anyway, this is a simple operator that encapsulates an if statement. There's gonna be times when you're going to create a variable and you're going to want to populate it based on a certain condition. Let's imagine you had, say, a role-playing game and you wanted to set, say, the strength of the player. Well, if the player didn't add a value to that, say, strength, you'll want to provide your own value. Let's say instead of working, let's say if it was between zero and six and you want to give a default number of three, well, if the player didn't add something, you would simply use three. Otherwise, you would use six. Now, you could easily do this with an if statement, as you can see here, and this will work fine. But sometimes it helps to make your code a little more compact and a little more cleaner. And to do that, you'd use a ternary operator. Ternary operators are very, very easy to see. You just have to think of them as if statements. The very first thing you're going to do is define your var variable. You're going to put in the type and the name of the variable with an equal sign after that. Next, you're going to provide a condition. And this works the same way as a regular if statement. The condition will go between the parentheses and it will evaluate to either being true or false. Once you have your parentheses, following your closing parentheses, you're going to put a question mark. This is your then. You can say if this condition is true, and the question mark means then do this, provide this value. And after the question mark, you're going to provide a value. You can provide a variable as well, an expression or so forth. And this value will then be stored in the original variable. If the condition of the ternary is equal to false, then you're gonna put a colon after that variable or expression, and then you're gonna put another value there. And that value will then be populated into your original variable. And then you simply close it off with a semicolon. And as you can see, you're taking an if statement and you're just compacting it down into one line. Okay, let's see this in action. Here you see we have our long code out here. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna delete all this and I'm going to create an array of integers. And here we have an array of numbers, and we're doing a number from 0 to 100. I'm going to create a string. And this string will contain whether a number is even or a number is odd. And I'm just going to call this number text. Okay, I'm going to assign the value of even and or odd to number text based on, let's say, the first element of the array. So first we add our parentheses, then we add numbers, and we'll put zero. We're checking the first element, and we're gonna use the modulus operator. We're gonna do modulus two. 
Remember, the modulus operator gets the remainder of the number that's being divided into it. In this case, let's say the number was 10, and we're doing modulus 2. We're going to divide 10 by 2, and the remainder is 0. So there is no remainder in that case. If this was, say, the number was 9, and we divided, a, we did a modulus operator, well, then it would be 4 would be how many times 2 can go into 9, but the result would be 1. So 9 modulus 2 would equal 1, because after we divide 2 into 9 four times, we have 1 left over. What we're doing here is we're dividing by 2, a number, and we're checking to see if it's 0. If the number is 0, then we know the number is an even number. If the number is not 0, then we know it's an odd number. That is our condition. So we put our condition in parentheses, and then we use a question mark. So if this is true, then we're going to return the value of even. Else, if this is false, we're going to return the value of odd, like so. And we'll print out the number. Like so. So we'll print out the number, and we'll say is, and if it's, we'll say either even or odd. We're going to do this two more times. And here we go. We're manually changing these values. Again, this isn't very good. And as you can see, this is also prone to error. Here, I'm working, if I'm working much faster and my finger slips, or what we like to call in the industry fat fingered, then say I did something like this, and look at this, it compiles, everything works. But now when it reaches this, it's going to have a runtime error and the app will crash. Okay, let's switch back to Unity. Now we're going to play this again. We'll, here we're going to disable our cube, and you can see 7 is odd, 81 is odd, 53 is odd. Okay, let's try this again. 95 is odd, 39, 86 is even. I thought we were going to have a string of bad luck there. But there is our 86 is, is even, and as you can see, we're doing this all using the ternary, ternary, ternary operator. Okay, your assignment. I want you to create a public string variable. And you can just simply do this right here. And you can just call it name. Whoops. Like so. And in your on disable, I want you to get to create a new variable called name text. If a person has put, typed in a name into the inspector. So if we come back here, And you can see, let's select our cube again. You can see here, if, if you type in a name in here, I want this code to say, hello, and then provide the name. If it, there is no name there, and your check would be something like this, string doesn't equal. If the string is not empty, you would provide their name, but if it is empty, I want you to provide another name, like, say, player1 or something like that. Well, that's the end of this tutorial, but in the next episode, we're going to be diving in switch statements, which are, again, very much like if statements. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.